In this brief session, I'm going to explain how to add an assignment, a regular assignment to e-learning, to your course in e-learning. So in the earlier video, we configured the gradebook. Keep that in mind. It's important to configure the gradebook first. So now to, we go back to the course. By the way, to go back to the course, we can just click on the title of the course here. It will take us back to the course page. Make sure you turn editing on on the course page. Usually it will be like that. So we want it turn it on. And then now in week one, we want to create for the students. We had them review those lectures. We are in class. You can post also video lectures as well. And we post the YouTube video and other supplemental material. Now the students are going to be doing an assignment for you. So to add an assignment, these are the steps. Basically, you click here on add an activity or a resource and the first one item here is the assignment option. We click on add and then click on assignment name. Just give it a name. So let's say for assignment one you want the students to write a reflection paper and just put the details on the description that's where you want to put all the details for your assignment the more details the better it is the clearer it's going to be for the students as to what they have to complete and all that type of thing so outline everything the way you want them you could also post source additional files for them to reference and you just drag and drop them in there so if you wanted them to have additional Just drag them in there. Then, under availability, I wouldn't. I don't recommend that you put due dates in here. You can just specify because then you forget to put the due dates for next time that you are teaching the course. So, if you're going to use the due dates, make sure that they are accurate and they are maintained from semester to semester. If you wanted to enable it, you can simply click on it and choose whatever date and time. It's important to understand that after the due date, depending on how you set up the system here, the, the students may not be able to submit anything and they will bug you with email. So under the submission types, the file submissions, that means that's the default setting. That means that the students are going to upload a file very similar to attaching it via email. It's just going to click on browse and just upload it. Under online text, this is where the students will type the text online and then you just have to go and view. It's not going to be formatted in a nice way, but it's just going to be online text. That's where you can limit certain words. If you chose online text, you could say I want 300 words. Number of files to be uploaded. Usually, typically, it's only one file that the students have to be uploading, but you might, if you have more, this is where you change it. Under feedback types, all of this stuff, you shouldn't really have to change much. So you can leave that alone. Under submission settings, you can even leave those alone as well. And then under the group submission settings, if you have groups in your class, this is where you can define whether the students have to submit in groups, yes or no, and all that type of thing. But that will be another video for another time. And then under notifications, notify graders about submissions that means every time a student submits a paper you could receive an email that the students submitted the paper so usually what I suggest is is that you leave this as a no and leave the next option here as a yes so the way that works is is that if you set a deadline up here for the due date and the students uploaded the assignment after the due date then you can receive an email. And I know that I just referenced earlier that we shouldn't set due dates. You can set due dates as long as you keep up with them. And then under grade, this is key. This is where you tell the system how you're going to grade this paper. Typically, papers are graded using points, like against 100 points or whatever point system that you use. Or you can use as I'll demonstrate 
potentially in a little bit, a rubric. So this would be uh, against points, and it's going to use a direct grading method, meaning they scored 90 points out of 100, 88 out of 100, or whatever they scored. The other grading method is to use a rubric, and that's the more preferred way. However, to choose that, you have to create and define the rubric for that assignment as well, which is not a bad idea to do anyway. So, for now, I'm just going to do it simple. We gave it a name on the top. We posted dates, due dates, if we chose to do so. Then, under here, under the grade, we tell the system how many points we are going to grade it against. Now, my suggestion is that if it's a small assignment, you don't uh, make the maximum points 100 points. Because when we configure the grade book, remember we did the simple aggregated, the simple weighted mean of grades. That's what we used earlier. So that means that if the big papers and the small papers are all 100 points, then all are equal. My suggestion is that if it's a small paper, maybe choose maximum points, it would be 20. But then if it's a five page paper, 10 page paper, that would be the 100 point paper. Now, down here, notice under the grade category, notice how we have these categories now? Those are the categories because we configured the grade book in the previous video. If you didn't watch that, go back and watch that again, how to create the grade book. But now this is easy. We can just choose homework assignments. And in the grade book, it's going to be under homework assignments. And then here are other options. You get put grade to pass and all that type of stuff restrict access and so on i wouldn't put too many restrictions because then you if you have the wrong settings you're going to create more problems for yourself under activity completion this is where you can and i explained this in the very beginning of the tutorial you, you this is where the student can either mark this as completed by putting a check mark on their end or you can make it conditional so that it will be marked complete only once certain criteria are met. For example, a student has to view it first, then they have to receive a grade for it, or they have to submit to it, and all these other stuff. But be cautious of dates. Now, if we are all said and done, we click on Save and Return to the Course. And that assignment has been created for the students. So the students now can click on it, and they will see the assignment here. So these will be the requirements. There's a file that they have to view for it. And then you'll be able to go and grade this stuff for the students. So that was creating an assignment. Now, let me go back here and I'll show you the grade book. So now if we go to the grade book here under grades, We'll notice here that under the setup for the gradebook, first your assignment is over here under homework assignments. But if we go here under setup, you'll notice that under homework assignments, we have assignment number one. Again, this was because when we configured it, this assignment, we chose the category under the grade area, the category to be under homework assignments. Now, Another thing to remember as well, since before I end uh, this tutorial on just creating a regular assignment, is also remember, if it's an important assignment, remember to also utilize the Turnitin module. Now, the Turnitin module, it's an add-on module, a paid module to eLearning or Moodle in this case. But remember to also create a Turnitin activity as well for that specific paper. This kind of avoids or prevents, to some extent, plagiarism and acts as a deterrent. So to add an Turnitin assignment, I'm going to demonstrate this very briefly without going into very many details. You simply click on Add an Activity or Resource. You click on Turnitin Assignment. Ignore this version 2 for now. You click on Add. And you just say, and we usually choose this wording, a reflection paper, originality check. And then under the summary, we say, please upload your assignment.
So basically what the student is going to do is they're going to upload the assignment twice. Once for you to grade it, once to be checked against Turnitin. I know in Turnitin as well you can grade it directly from there and all that type of stuff. But for the sake of simplicity, it works best this way, at least from our experience. Now, under grade here, you don't want to have a points assigned to the Turnitin assignment. In this case, you just click on None, and then scroll down, and then click on Save and Return to the course. So that was creating an assignment in eLearning. Hopefully that makes sense. In some cases, we recommend that you click here, Edit, and move it to the right.